Welcome back. Let's talk about Earth, shall we? Make sure I'm clicked there. <clears throat> okay. Earth, 4.54 billion years old. Um, but early Earth was definitely different than what Earth looks like now. Early Earth was very hot. It kind of had a uniform molten composition and density. Molten meaning uh, liquid rock. So it was basically a big ball of lava and magma. And it was composed mostly uh, of silicates and iron and magnesium oxides. Um, that becomes important here in a little bit. Silicates end up making a lot of rocks that are on the surface now, granites and things like that. And iron and other heavy metals actually are, are more so composed of, uh, are, are what uh, more so the, the core and inner, inner workings of the earth are composed of. Anyway, more on that in just a minute. Um, the temperature of early Earth was hot because remember, as all of this stuff, as these disks, uh, these little you know bands and these disks are are coalescing, as this material is coming together, um, you get a lot of impacts, stuff collecting and hitting together, a lot of meteorite and asteroid impacts, gravity compressing things, the force of things being squished together uh, also increases heat, and there's also radioactive material that's collected in in these uh, in these early protoplanets and radioactive material as it decays one of the byproducts is heat it gives off energy in the form of heat so this is probably what early earth looked like a big hot molten ball of magma and lava spherical because that's how gravity works not flat I, I surprise myself every time now that I have to say that just because of well, you know why. Anyway, so um, <clears throat> so it looked like this for a while. We don't have any rocks from the very beginning of Earth 4.54 billion years ago because there was no solid rock. So it's this molten ball of stuff. It took time for it to cool down. But once it did... Once the, the impact stopped, once Earth kind of swept up all of that material that was in the accretion disk uh, during that uh, early formation of the solar system, once the, the impacts decreased and things started to calm down, then Earth began to differentiate. And what I mean by that is Earth began to kind of separate out into separate layers. Um, how that occurred is that... Um, well, I'll tell you here in just a second. So, you know, as early Earth is molten magma ball of material, you know, it's just hot magma. It's all kind of the same consistency. But as Earth began to cool down and this bombardment stopped, then the uniform nature of Earth changed and it began to, again, differentiate, separate out into layers. The heavier stuff like the material made of iron and, and nickel, another heavy element, began to sink to the kind of center of the earth. Heavier stuff sinks. While the lighter stuff kind of floated to the surface. So they began to differentiate as earth started to calm down. So the heavier iron and, and nickel kind of sank towards the core. So the core of the earth now is mostly primarily comprised of heavy elements like iron and nickel, whereas the crust of the earth, the lighter stuff, the less dense stuff, floated to the top. Heavier stuff sinks, lighter stuff floats. It has to deal with density and some other things, but simply put, heavier stuff sank, lighter stuff floated to the top. So the lighter silicates, which make up minerals like quartz and a number of other common minerals, which also eventually make up rocks, more on that in a later unit, all that stuff floated uh, to the kind of surface. So, yeah, this the stuff we stand on, the plates, the mountains, the, 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 the vast areas of the crust of the earth, that's actually the lighter stuff. That lighter stuff floated to the surface. A lot of the heavier stuff sank to the core. Now, not all iron and nickel sank to the core. We still find some iron in the crust here and there. But for the most part, a lot of that heavier material sank, a lot of the lighter material kind of rose to the surface. Um, so as the, again, the earth began to calm down and cool and differentiate, it began to separate itself out. And so we have the solid inner core, 
made up of primarily iron and nickel. We have the liquid outer core. So it's in a liquid state, still primarily iron and nickel, but in a liquid state. And then we have the mantle of the earth, which is the largest by volume portion of the earth. The mantle, if, if you can imagine like, uh, like hot Play-Doh mixed with rocks, it can kind of flow and move a little bit. Not very liquidy, but it still has some movement to it. That's kind of what I like in the mantle too. Hot, sticky Play-Doh mixed with rocks, and it kind of moves around. You know, you can move Play-Doh around a little bit. Um, so it's kind of like that. So we have the, again, mostly solid mantle. And then we have the solid crust. Okay, so solid inner core, liquid outer core, mostly solid mantle, and then the solid crust. Remember, though, Earth is a dynamic planet, and it changes. That's how we started off this unit. It's changed in size and shape, in geographic distribution where stuff is on the surface of the Earth. The continents change, the oceans basins change, and that continues on through time. It changes, uh, there's, uh, the planet changes in the composition of the atmosphere and how that has evolved. And where life forms exist today differ from those that lived in the past. Remember those spheres? We talked about the the geosphere, the lithosphere, it's the rocky stuff, the atmosphere, the biosphere, and the hydrosphere, all of those are connected and they all change because Earth is a dynamic planet. So focusing in on Earth's layers because this, we'll start kind of moving from the inside out because it's the exterior, the lithosphere, that really is connected to all these other spheres. But let's go from the inside out. <clears throat> So we have the core, which we have the solid, mostly iron and nickel inner core, and the uh, liquid outer core, again, mostly iron and nickel. There's still iron and nickel in the crust, but a lot of that heavy material sank tor towards the core. Um, oh, there's the core right there. Then we have the mantle. It's 83% of the volume of the Earth. So it's the biggest layer by volume, and it's composed mostly of a mineral called peridotite. If any of you have ever heard of the gemstone peridot, uh, it's uh, uh, a derivation of peridotite. So this is uh, peridotite as a rock, ha is dark, it's a dense igneous rock, more on that in a later unit, very rich in iron and magnesium. Here's where that magnesium's coming into play. There's the mantle. And then we have the crust. Um, there's two types of crust. We have continental crust, which is thicker, about 20 to 90 kilometers thick. That's 12 to 60 or 70 miles so thick, depending on where you're at. And then oceanic crust, which is much thinner. And that's where that's at. So two different types of crust. Um, the Looking back here, there's a few additional terms to talk about. And it gets a little confusing, so I'm going to do the best I can here. All right. So we have this layer called the asthenosphere. The asthenosphere, that's how it's pronounced, is part of the upper mantle. So you remember, the mantle is this big volume chunk of, of in the Earth's interior. The upper part of that is called the asthenosphere, the very upper part of that. We have the lower mantle, and the very upper mantle is called the asthenosphere. So the asthenosphere is part of the upper mantle. Um, it behaves plastically and slows uh, and slowly flows. So again, there's that moving around type material. Um, it's very similar in nature to the kind of the rest of the, uh, the mantle. But then we have the lithosphere. So the lithosphere, let me go back again, the lithosphere is the another portion of the upper mantle as well as the crust. All right. So asthenosphere is part of the upper mantle, and then the other part of the upper mantle and the crust makes up the lithosphere. And it's the solid part of the upper mantle and the crust. Now, my, my question always was in geology was, well, if the mantle, which is mostly solid, but it kind of behaves plastically, kind of like hot sticky Play-Doh. Well, if the upper part is solid, why don't we just call that the crust? And I've never gotten a good answer. Like, well, chemically, it's still the mantle. I'm like, well, eh, all right, I guess. 
So anyway, so you have the upper part of the mantle. It's a little bit cooler, so it's actually solid. And then the crust, that makes up the lithosphere. Okay, so why that distinction? I, I don't know. There's some things in science that don't make sense for me. This is one of them. Okay, so again, we have the lithosphere. So when you hear that term, <clears throat> that consists of the crust and the upper solid part of the mantle. The asthenosphere is the other part of the upper mantle that behaves plastically and <coughs> flows slowly, very similar to the lower mantle. So why is that different? Someone just wanted to seem important and came up with these weird terms. That's what I'm pretty sure it came up with. All right. <coughs> so anyway, you might hear these terms. So uh, the crust is the outermost layer of the earth. Again, there's this differentiation in thickness. Continental crust is less dense, so lighter. Uh, you know, it's lighter It is one way to think about it. Uh, contains mostly silicon and aluminum uh, as far as uh, high amounts of elementally what it's made out of. Oceanic crust, much thinner, uh, but it has a higher density, so it's a little heavier. Um, composed mostly of uh, rocks, basalt, and gabbro, which are higher in iron and magnesium and things of that nature. And so when, um, when these two types of crust interact within the lithosphere, um, this is where uh, you start to get something called plate tectonics. Because of the different densities of these crusts, and because of what's happening below the crust in the mantle. Because we have different processes going on, what's happening in the mantle drives what's happening on to the crust. And when these different types of crust interact, we get a number of different geologic processes occurring. However, we'll talk more about that in the plate tectonic theory, another one of those foundational theories in the next section. I will see you back here in just a minute.